Hi everyone, welcome to another It's Live live show. My name is Rodney Smith. It's a brand new year, it's January 1st, 2020. Probably a terrible day to do a live stream and expect people to show up. If you've had an exciting New Year's Eve, then you might be just wanting to go to bed right now. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Look, you can watch the live show anytime. But some of you are dedicated, I know you're here. So thank you for being here and welcome, welcome to the new year. And I have to admit, you know, normally I start these live shows, I'm kind of in a panic, things are falling apart all around me. Not this time. It's a brand new year and things are going relatively smoothly. So that's, that's exciting. Although I say that and I haven't checked the comments to see if we've got any audio or video or anything. So I'm gonna hop over there and do that right now. Let's, let's find out if it's working. And then we'll jump right into our, our schedule. So let's, let's see. Checking the comments. Happy New Year I'm seeing, yes, from, on, from Ottawa, Canada. Thank you, DQ, fellow Canadian. Yes, it sounds like, how's the, um, how's the audio level? The one sort of lingering issue I'm having is getting the audio levels to the right amount. Hopefully, hopefully this sounds okay. You let me know. But uh, I, got a, I got a nice little lineup here for you. Now, for those of you who've been watching the last few live shows, you'll know I start these by just reminding people I'm trying to get these on a more regular schedule so that you can sort of plan for them if you'd like to join them when they're live. And the plan is to do them every second Wednesday. And I've been doing that for the last three live shows in a row. The only thing is the next <laughs> second Wednesday from this one is on the day I'm leaving. I'm, I'm traveling to Dallas uh, for a BGG meeting. So we were doing great, but it means that <laughs> at the beginning of this year, we're already, <laughs> we're already messing it up. So what I think I'm gonna do is have it the following week. So that would be the, I think I wrote down here, yeah, the January 22nd. January 22nd is the date of the next live show, and then we'll just do it every two weeks after that until something again comes up to disrupt it. But anyway, I think, look, we had a good run. We had a good three episode run. That's pretty good for me. I'm not usually that consistent with a live show. So uh, I, I like, kind of like having it consistent myself because it means that uh, as they're coming up, I'm, I'm drawing a little notes to myself for the week, thinking, oh, here's something I could talk about in the live show and that sort of thing. I also want to try to keep these to about uh, an hour to an hour and a half. I'm going to try to keep this one to about an hour. I'd like, I'd like to try to do that. We'll see. Uh, I haven't packed as much into this episode as I did the last one, but there are some surprises. We're going to be playing some games here. Well, one game in particular during the live show, so stick around for that. I also have some questions from the BGG Guild, and hopefully I'll be getting your questions during this, this live show. So certainly feel free to, to leave some questions here. And I'm seeing lots of hellos, and Happy New Year's from oh, a whole bunch of people. <laughs> take you there. And uh, usually before these live shows, I'll put a thread just announcing the live show. And if you have questions you want to preload in there, you can. And this is one of them. Do you usually open presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? 
asked Vincent, yes, I do celebrate Christmas and uh, just had a, a wonderful here, one, wonderful one here with the family. Andrew, my daughter, wasn't able to be with us in person, but we Skyped her in and she joined us for the whole thing. She was like on an iPad for Christmas, which was nice. It was, I, I'm sure she would have preferred to have been in the home, but she's, she's working. She's uh, working at Disney, so she had, uh, she had to go to work that day, actually, which might seem like a bummer, but probably better than being home alone, honestly. So nice to have her with us. She's going to be joining us uh, in a few weeks uh, here at home, and uh, we'll have another little Christmas, and she can open up her gifts in person. But anyway, your question was, Vincent, do we open them on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning? Always Christmas morning, never Christmas Eve. I don't believe, I'm trying to think, there might be like one example where my parents might let me open one gift on a Christmas Eve, but generally, no, all Christmas were Christmas, mo Christmas gifts were Christmas morning, never earlier. And uh, we've, we've sort of stuck to that tradition with the kids. Actually, I think Vincent had a follow-up question sort of along those lines. Let's see here. Yeah, he said, did Christy and you keep any family traditions you each had or make new ones? Now, I'm going to assume this is related to uh, Christmas because this was in the same sort of paragraph of questions. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I had a tradition growing up that we always had a full hearty breakfast before Christmas, before any gifts were open. We didn't even really, no, we didn't even go into the room where the tree was. You ate your breakfast sort of within eyesight of the tree, so you could see kind of the gifts there waiting for you, but then you had to like eat a meal with your family. And it was the most laborious and long-suffering meal of the year. Because, you know, you didn't, I just wanted to open up gifts. I didn't want to be eating this, this three-course breakfast. But it was a thing my parents did, and there are many pictures. Oh, I should have, I should have grabbed. I think I have some up in the family albums of me on Christmas morning, just kind of like pouting because <laughs> I just want to get into the the Christmas tree. But I'll tell you something. I now do that to my kids. Uh, it's it's our tradition. Now I will say they suffer it much better than I did. Uh, it's sort of, I don't know. It's kind of. I don't want to say it's a joke. It's not a joke, but it's kind of a, a thing that we do and. We know it sucks to wait, but there's a little bit of joy in it too. That the delayed gratification, it sort of builds the excitement. And so we sit down, we make the meal together, we eat it. We don't go in the room where the tree is, but you can see them through the closed doors. And, and then we go in all together and we open up the gift. So that is a tradition sort of for my family. Um, I, I don't know that Christy brought over any particular traditions from her family into our traditions with the kids. I mean, we don't have a lot of traditions with the kids, honestly, around Christmas. It's a pretty low-key affair. But um, we, we, visited her, we visited her family uh, after Christmas, and that was lovely. So, yeah. Anyway, it was a wonderful holidays. I hope you had a good holidays if you were celebrating. But um, there you go, Vincent. There are some answers to your questions. And again, if you'd like to answer questions that, that are sort of I can sort of prepare for into the live show, then you can do that over the Board Game Geek Guild for Watch It Played. But you can also ask your questions in the comments as well. We'll, we'll look at those, those as well. So uh, let me see. I have some, do I have some other notes here? Oh, yeah. I wanted to, um, I want to talk to you about resolutions because January 1st, it's kind of a thing a lot of people are talking about, right? What new things are you going to do in the new year? And I have to admit, I always, um, I always, <laughs> is it normal to have a ring in my ears now? Oh, do you have a ring in your ears? What happened? Oh, oh, no. Something, something bad happened. Audio went weird. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm seeing all kinds of all caps. You know, the thing about the announcements, the thing about the, the help that is provided in, in the chat, which, thank you, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm always seeing it late. <laughs> so, uh, oh, no. It, it looks like maybe it got better. But I apologize if it got crazy there. Let me, let me just double check and make sure that the batteries didn't die on my, my battery pack. Remember when things were going really well on the live show? Well, um, okay, let me just double check. Everything seems okay over here, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. If it does, please feel free, again, to use the uh, all caps liberally in those cases, and I'll <laughs> see alert, alert, alert. Audio is super bad, <laughs> please fix. Whew. All right, I'll keep an eye on that. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. All right. <laughs> So I don't know what I was, I don't know what you missed. I was talking about family traditions during Christmas. Hopefully some of it you caught. Anyway, um, let's, uh, maybe someone asked a question that, that, that the uh, software just wanted to save me from. I don't know. I, I want to talk about New Year's resolutions. So if that was cut off, that's what I wanted to transition to next. Um, 
because uh, it's a time of year where people do this a lot. And I always had the attitude in previous years that it was a bit silly because what's special about January 1st, really? I mean, you can start a new tradition at any time. January 25th. I mean, if you're going to do something, just do it. That was always kind of my, I'll say, cynical kind of um, feelings about it. And I, I really don't like cynicism. I don't like it in myself. I don't like it in other people. <laughs> Skepticism, sure. Always be questioning. But cynicism is not great. And, I, you know, I, I had a, a change of heart around resolutions. Because I think maybe as I've gotten older, I realized that life is fickle and difficult and challenging. And there's all kinds of things in the human condition that keep us from maybe doing the things that we want to do for ourselves, that our higher ambitions. And look, if the notion that January 1st is somehow special, if that motivates a person to make just one change in their life for the better, then who cares what the reasoning is? Great, that's a good thing. <laughs> so if January 1st is magical for some people, and it, look, frankly, it is for me. It does get me thinking about the new year and things I want to do differently, then embrace it. I don't want to fight it anymore. <laughs> Hold on here, everybody. We got, uh, okay. Oh boy, this is bad. Um, okay, I don't know, I don't know if better. I don't know if this is any better. Uh, here, we're gonna do this, we're gonna turn this off. Oh boy, oh boy, okay, okay. I don't, <laughs> Cybertron is coming. Oh no, oh no, okay. It's fixed, isn't it? Whew. All right, I think I, I think I know what's going on. It's not a new battery, so I'm gonna have a, a Luke's gonna be joining me later in this episode. Or that was the plan, and to do that, we had to have two mics, and so I had to hook up two different mic packs to the camera, and I'm do, using a new method. Uh, look, I've had two people on the live stream before, and we've been able to do it without difficulty, but. I spoke too soon earlier when I said things were just going flawlessly. <laughs> Here we are again. That's something else for me to fix. I'm telling you, there's something about shooting live. There are a number of challenges that um, even when you think you fix them, they crop up and they give you new challenges. So sorry about that. Hopefully that will be the last thing, the last time that happens. Um, hopefully. It means when he comes down, we might have to share the mic. I might have to hold it between us to get better audio. I'll figure this out. All right. Resolutions. We were talking about resolutions. I was going to share some of mine. I was going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, if you have a resolution, put all caps resolution and then write your resolution beside that. And I'll skim through them afterwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I see Crystal's in here. Hi, Crystal. I hope you had a good New Year's with your family. Is there something related to board gaming or content creation that you've never done before that you'd like to do in 2020? Um... Interesting question. Yeah, there are, uh, there are a couple of things I would like to do. Um, there's actually three things. I know I was, we were talking about news resolutions, but yeah, Crystal's a friend. I want to answer Crystal. So um, it's my show. I'll do what I want. <laughs> um, I, uh, I would like to do a, and I've talked about this before, but I want to do a, a Rodney Recommends kind of show, which is not a review show, although it will have an element of reviewing in it. But it's more that I want to recommend some titles that I see would be good fits for certain situations. It's not going to be like a top 10 list or a top 5 list or something like that. Just a, a little sampling of things that I would, I would recommend for particular situations. Because I, I, I don't review on the channel, but I do get asked an awful lot by people about what games I'd recommend for certain situations. And I thought, well, maybe this is a way to kind of service that request on my own, on my own terms, kind of, um, in my own kind of controlled way. Uh, while still offering some insight into things that I enjoy and, and would recommend. So that's one of the shows I would like to try to do this year. Uh, hopefully sooner than later, maybe January, February. 
The other thing I'd like to do is get back to the gameplay videos. I had talked about in the last live show, I might do that, uh, working with some apps to try to help facilitate, make it a little easier to do because it's challenging to get to. And the uh, third thing is I would like to get to the live gaming marathon that I had promised many moons ago, one of my, well, two, two years ago in my fundraiser, which I still haven't gotten to. And I'll tell you something, again, <laughs> seeing the um, things crop up again here in the uh, technology, it does make me worry about doing something that was gonna be like hours at a time, but I'll get this figured out. I will eventually get this figured out. All right. Let's talk about resolutions. And don't worry, I'll get to your questions as well, even if your name isn't Crystal. <laughs> okay, so uh, resolutions. So one of the resolutions that I had is I want to get my, and I, this was my plan before getting to New Year's, was to get all of my unplayed games in my collection played. I bet a lot of people probably feel they'd like to do that as well. I just want to get down to five unplayed games. Well, right now I have 20 unplayed games in my collection. I've been doing a pretty good job lately of trying to knock a few titles off the list. So I'm down to 20. That means I need to get 15 more played. 15, 15 more played. The challenge, of course, is that new games do come into the house as I work on things for the channel, but I'm gonna try to limit that to just what I'm working on and the games that I have. So that's one of my resolutions. My other one is I'd like to get back to tracking my plays. I, uh, I usually track them in BGG stats, or sorry, not BGG stats, but BG stats, and I, I haven't been doing it for a while. So starting January 1st, 2020, I'm gonna get back to uh, logging my plays because I do like looking back at the end of the year. I've seen some people posting already on, online now about 2019, here's what I played, and they have their BGG. It's hard to say BG when you're so used to saying BGG. Your B, their BGG stat, their BG stats compiled <laughs> into a little, well, the, uh, the app uh, compiles them together for you, which is really cool. If you haven't seen this app, I recommend it. BG stats is the name of the app. I want to track my plays. I want to read more. Um, read more books, um, fiction, nonfiction, that sort of thing. I used to read quite a bit. I still read a lot, but mostly rule books. <laughs> and I'd like to read something other than rule books. My wife's a big reader. And I recently picked up a copy of The Shining and I kind of tore through that, read that quite quickly. And I enjoyed getting back to reading again. So that's something I'd like to do. I actually have a couple of books here that I'm, I'm uh, currently reading. These are going to be the first ones for 2020. This is Isaac Asimov's The Foundation. They call it the trilogy. There's actually more books than just a trilogy. Uh, I've already read these books uh, when I was younger. M really one of my favorite series. I Isaac Asimov's one of my favorite writers. And uh, I want to reread at least the first book. We'll see if I go through the rest of them. I'm not sure. I mean, because if I do read the rest of them in the series, that's like six of the 12 books I'm trying to read. I figure 12 is a good kind of goal because it's maybe one a month. And this one here, which I just picked up, called City of Light, City of Poison, Murder, Magic, and the First Police Chief of Paris. This one's more of a nonfiction. What's interesting is it is written almost like fiction in terms of its prose, but it's all based on historical documents. The author goes to great lengths to say, everything I, I talk about here and the way I write it, uh, it might have um, a narrative flavor to it, almost the, the flavor of fiction, but it's all based on historical records, findings, court, court findings, and all the rest of it. So I'm interested to kind of get into a kind of living, breathing, uh, old-timey city of Paris when crime was at its height, and they brought in basically the first chief of police to come in there and try to, <laughs> try to shape things up. So interested in reading that. So that's uh, one of the things, reading some books. Um, I wrote on here, finish a personal documentary. That's, that's a weird terming. I don't have a personal documentary. I did a, a video for uh, some friends who were building a house themselves and like quite literally themselves, like by hand. And I, I came in to shoot some video on a few of the days during that process and I made a quasi kind of documentary of that experience. And um, I went back and watched it, rewatched it recently. I was like, wow, I've, you know, I've learned a few things over the last few years in terms of editing and, and I would like to go back and sort of repackage that. I never posted it publicly because I used a lot of copyright music in it because it was just a personal kind of private project. And I would like to strip that out, put copyright free, royalty free music into it so I could release it publicly. Um, it's a piece of work that I'm kind of proud of and it's not board gaming related. So it's something that'd be a little bit of a sort of a creative outlet that'd be something different. And I'll probably post that when I do over my other YouTube channel. If you're not aware, I have another YouTube channel called youtube.com slash Rodney J. Smith. It's a personal channel. I have a vlog that I post there. I haven't posted a vlog in a while, but I'm going to be getting back to that in 2020 as well. But I think, I, I think that's probably the place to put something like this little documentary. So the last two things I'll just mention very quickly, and I want to see what your resolutions are. I want to exercise more and eat better. Uh, I usually try to have some kind of exercise regimen going. Um, 
because I generally don't eat better, <laughs> and that sort of keeps it in check. But uh, towards the end of this last year, both things sort of fell away. So I'd like to get back on track with that. And uh, I think I'm gonna do the P90X3 is gonna be the uh, exercise program I use. And in terms of eating better, um, just gonna try to be a little more consistent with my diet and a little less frivolous with what I put into my mouth. All right, let's look at uh, some of your resolutions. I'm seeing some more Happy New Year's. Thank you for those. Happy New Year to you too. And thanks again for joining me here in this live show. I see some resolutions. I'm gonna go back through here. I'm not seeing any more comments about the audio uh, crapping out on us again, so that's nice to see. Again, sorry about that. I, these little things that happen are difficult to deal with because you don't know they're going to happen until they happen, because during the testing, this wasn't happening. <laughs> so, fun. All right, let's see here. One of the resolutions is, <laughs> from Chuck, is to not make resolutions anymore. Hey, Luke, I heard you come down. You can come on down. Don't worry about the microphone, you can leave it off. The oh, micro it's, right. it's just causing problems. Luke's here, everybody. You can pull a chair up beside me, though. I'm just going through some uh, New Year's resolutions that other people right. have made. I'm going to pull off my mic here. <laughs> the uh, sound is going to be muted for a second, for your own sake. Okay. You should be able to hear us now, again. Can people hear me? That's the real question. I, I, yes, we, I will scroll down and check that in a moment. Hopefully it's not too crazy loud and not too crazy soft. Just let us know. We'll see. <laughs> Everyone, this is Luke Smith. This is me. <laughs> this is Luke. And Luke is going to join me here for a game, but I thought since you're down here, we can, I can tell you some of the resolutions that people have been uh, yeah, sharing. let's go through them. So Chuck said not to make resolutions I anymore. heard that, yeah. That's fine, Chuck. That's another approach. <laughs> Uh, Dutch Yoda would like to finish Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven, we don't have that game. It is a massive board game. I it's think got, I've seen it. Yeah, so you probably mean, have. And it was huge, and I was like, that looks like an impossible yeah, you, game to get through. You could, like, you I could, could not. You could hide a body in that box. Yeah. Um, yeah, it has like something like, I think, 3,452 scenarios in it, so it's insane. All right, uh, I, hope, I hope you <laughs> are able to finish Gloomhaven, Dutch Yoda. Uh, Jackie says that she would like to spoil her cat. Oh, wait, I've been making that resolution every day for the last 17 plus years. Yeah, Jackie, you have. So you have to try a little harder, come up with something better as a resolution. Maybe don't spoil your cats. That could be your resolution, huh? Maybe that. Our cats. He gets spoiled. He does get spoiled. He, okay, it's not, he lo okay. It's, he doesn't get spoiled too much. It's, look, it, look, it's your time to talk. I've been talking a lot, so I'll let look, you go okay. ahead. So, you know, we're supposed to have him on a diet right now because, you know, he's a little bigger than yes. he's supposed to be. Yes. Might not be sticking to that diet. No, but yeah, that's he's fine. he's he's enjoying lots of treats, um, it, which includes like every morning now. Every morning, my wife opens the door to our bedroom at oh, yeah. six in the morning. And the cat gets up, climbs in the bed. Do you know who the after the clap, cat prounce prances all over me? Okay, he then yeah. falls asleep beside me. I don't want to spend time with the cat. I want to spend time with the cat. <laughs> he doesn't sleep on me. I know, I know. It's like the worst. Oh, I think he just wants to pester me. All right, so cats, a resolution for Jackie. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, we've got here one from Jennifer Sims who says, to complete a 20 by 20 challenge, it'll be really, it'll all be really short light games like Zombie Dice. So 20, if you haven't heard of these challenges before. No? Okay, well, <laughs> no. sometimes you may have a 10 by 10 challenge or 20 by 20 challenge. This is you pick a certain number of games, board games, and you play them that many times. So you pick 10 oh, board games, okay. and you play each of them 10 times. So it's a commitment in a lot right, of ways okay. to take a deep dive into a particular Get to game, know the game. Rather yeah. than just sort of like you know cycling through all the latest and greatest right. new things or whatever, right? So that's a good uh, resolution. I, a lot of people do it, and I, I wish you well in that. All right. Um, let's see here. Resolution. Buy less, play more, says Fran. I think that's a lot of people's resolution, honestly. Now, you've been buying a few things more on the video game side lately, right? I have been spending money like it's no one's business. Okay, now, <laughs> no, okay, not really. There's some good deals. Christmas. You know? Christmas. There, was a, there was a few Steam gift cards that Christmas, came through. Christmas. Yeah. I got my job. Yes. And so, you know, just spending my way through. What are yeah. you playing right now, in case people want to know? Uh, Fallout New Vegas. I mean, that's a huge one that I just picked up recently. Yes. Um, that was kind of just in the Fallout 4. That's yeah. That's it. That's about it for now, yeah. 
All right, uh, let's see here. Don't forget, if you're gonna ask a question, put the, the word question in all caps. It'll help it jump out to me later when I'm scanning through here. I just see one here from Jackson. So Jackson, if you don't mind, and you're still here, feel free to repost your question with the word question in all caps. Thank you. Just don't wanna miss your question later. Um, all right. Okay, I think that is the resolutions. Um, oh, I see one here from Marcus who says, win my guild ball game against my friend Michael on Tuesday. Well, that's a very specific resolution. <laughs> resolution. Yeah, it only happens once, really. Yeah. So. I mean, good luck, I guess. Uh, if you don't, what will you do? Just resolve to beat him the next Tuesday? <laughs> I guess. All right. So um, let's, let's end with the resolutions there, and let's uh, jump into a game with Luke. And I will win. You, you might win. I resolved to try not to let you in. There's no dice in this game. The game that we're talking about, though, is one called Trophies. And again, if anyone wouldn't mind, I'm just going to watch the comments for just a second. Let me know how the audio is. Is it okay? Are you hearing Luke and I both equally reasonably well? Just let me know in the comments before we dive into this, because if I can adjust something, I will. Yeah. Yeah. I should be coming through fine. I, I think so, but this Hope is so. not this is I, not yeah. ideal. I heard upstairs answer going scratching noise when I was oh, watching the video. You, okay. When I was watching the live stream. Yes, yeah. Yes. So. You you experienced what yeah. everyone else was experiencing. Yeah. Great. Okay. <laughs> um I'm not seeing anyone saying otherwise, so maybe either there's such a delay or everything's fine. Let's just hope everything's fine, Luke, shall we? It's probably fine. It's probably it's fine. good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I mean, uh, there great. we go. Perfect. There Thank you. Go. Glad to hear that the audio is fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so the game that we got here is one called Trophies. This is one that I bought uh, just a little before Christmas because I thought it might be a fun Christmas game from the little bit that I knew of it. And uh, it's from a company called uh, Facade Games, F-A-C-A-D-E Games. And uh, I like the, the graphic design of it. And it's not a game that, I mean, you can play it with two players, which yeah. we're going to do now. They have rules for two players. But I think traditionally you would play it with more players. But let me just give you a sense of, of how it works. Let's uh, switch over here to the other camera so people can see us and the game. So there we go. it comes with a deck of cards. Now there's actually more decks than, more decks, more cards than what you see here. There's just a sample of them. And on one side it has a list of categories like we see here. And then on the other it has letters. So in a two player game you'd set the deck up like this you would agree to one of the categories. So let's just go with the, the, uh, the bottom most category, all right? And so then, when you're ready to start, you'd flip over the top card, you'd read the category, so school subject, you'd see the letter F, yeah. and you need to think of something and shout out, you know, uh, a school subject. Farming. Farts. Far <laughs> <laughs> okay, farts is something you might do in school, but it's not a subject. Uh, French. Would you say? Okay, yes. French is much better. Yeah, French, that you be... that's what you should have said. You're in French immersion. <laughs> I've let my French people Francais. down. You have let your French people down. Francais. Uh, but you said farming. Farming. That Actually, be... yes, agriculture, agriculture is is, yeah. uh, is a course. Sometimes a class. Okay, so so the person who shouts it out uh, at first, first. gets, uh, gets the, uh, the, the letter. Now, I, I will tell you the rules for more than two players afterwards, but let's keep going with this. So now we're going to flip. We're going to see the next one. Now, we're doing this upside down. I will try to read out loud the, uh, the subjects. Something in a medicine cabinet. Why? Um, oh, and you can play at home. If you think of something, try to shout it out. See if you get shout it out before Luke or I. You can, that is a point for yourself. Why? Why? Why did we get this? Um, something uh, in a medicine cabinet. Uh, this is tough. I don't know. Um, you, uh, your toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's a better one someone else that feels said, like I think a, that's... You, you'll accept it? <laughs> that's a bit of a cheat. That's I can't enough. think of anything. Make sure you put in the comments, if you thought of something that you'd find a medicine cabinet that's a why, let us know. I want to know. I'm going to take this point, though, for now. All right, the next one. <laughs> a pizza topping that starts with W. Watermelon? Watermelon? <laughs> Seriously? Okay, we got people putting pineapple on pizza, okay? You know, it's Why true. Why stop there? Let's go all the way up. <laughs> Watermelon. Watermelon. I've never seen it, but I can't say that it hasn't can't been done. It. Yeah. I can't. Water, okay? Like, we could go. Watermelon. Anything. All right, we'll put. Boom. <laughs> if it hasn't been done, you might have just started something there, exactly. Luke. Exactly. All right. <laughs> something terrible. Okay, so the next one is a swimming term, uh, N. A swimming term. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know many swimming I don't, terms. I don't know that one either. I think when you if you get stumped and you can't come up with them, we'll just throw that one away. Oh, actually, you know what I did? I, 
I had a, a stack over here that's a little small. So this is here. Let me just show you. Here's here's some of the cards that come in the game. I have another stack here. It's a little smaller. Let's do this stack. This will be the official one. Now that we've done sort of a practice round, people have seen so these... how it works. Yeah, let's just put these points away. <laughs> Look, we're basically tied. We're basically I was tied. Winning. But now now we can have everyone join. So I, I sort of hinted you can <sighs> play along, and you can. So starting here officially. Okay. okay. When we flip it over and we read out the announcement, if you at home shout out the answer before either of us do. Mark that down as a point for yourself. I think there's 25, maybe 26 cards in here. So the best you can do is 26 points. All right, and afterwards you can tell us how many points you got. All right? All right. You can compare against uh, how we did. Are you ready? So the first one is something that needs batteries. It starts with B. Um, a boombox. A boombox needs batteries. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> you do that one? Wow. Yeah. Aren't they plugged into a wall usually? No, no. The, no. You, you oh, put no, up, no, right, okay. right. You walk down I the street in your boombox. Come on, everyone that. does totally that. Totally wrong. Okay, all right. So here we go. Next one. This one is a phone app that starts with L. A phone app that starts with L. Mm, a phone app. A popular one probably because you could say anything. anything. No, well, just if you, if you can think of one. Um, why can't I think of a phone app that starts with L? Lumux. Lumux? Lumux. Oh, that's, that's, that's right. That's Boom. the app you just installed today. Okay. Little mini story time in the middle sure. here. Sure. Uh, for Christmas. <laughs> Why not? It's your show. Exactly. <laughs> Glad we can agree on that. Okay. Yes. So I have an Alexa, and for Christmas, I got those like LED controllable light bulbs so I can tell Alexa, hey, turn off my light or turn it on. Right. And so you need an app to get to work, and it's called Lumix. So, well done. There we go. So, really, that gift that we got you got you the point. I feel like that. Yes. Rip that card in half. I'll take half. And you keep half. All right. <laughs> I don't no. think I All right. So the next one is something. Something nerdy? Something nerdy that starts with I. Isotopes? <laughs> <laughs> isotopes? I, you know, sure. I, I, I'm going to give you that. Isotopes are kind right. of a, a, a nerdy thing, I suppose. That's right. I'll take that. Isotopes. I'm uh, not doing so well. All right. We've got a baby item. Farts. Okay, I'm, I'm just going with farts for that one. That is not an item. That is a thing that a baby produces. <laughs> I suppose an adult does, too. Okay. All right, all right. Um, something specific. For a baby. Fanny diaper. A fanny, <laughs> fanny diaper. No, I'm not. If farts doesn't get it, you're not getting a fanny diaper. What's a fanny diaper? Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, it feels like it should be an easy one. It but. should. Um, I I want to say fruit? <laughs> it's not a baby item. Yeah, the, the, the well, baby okay. fruits. Baby fruit. So. That starts with B, not F. Mm. Are we stumped on this one? Yeah, I don't All right, know this one. we're gonna pass on this one. <laughs> uh, something in this city that starts. First of all, we don't live in a city; we live in a town. Okay. Something that is in here. It starts with our Rodney. Son of a gun! <laughs> you Got did it. it. <laughs> yes, that's well done. Okay. All right. Um, vegetable. Terrets. <laughs> vegetable. Uh, tomato. Oh, yeah. Boom. All you right. said the terrets thing, and they go, I think of, I'm going to say carrots. And I was like, that's not tea. Wait, is a tomato a vegetable or a fruit? This is a thing that's been oh, debated. No. Um, and I can't remember which way the debate goes. Oh, I want to no. say, okay, I have no idea. <laughs> First off, let me say that. Um, I think it's a vegetable. I think, I feel like, I feel like what it is, like, it's what, normally a vegetable. You know, you know who's going to tell us? The comments. The com okay. Like, vigorously. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if let's see if what, let's see what we miss. Yeah. Let's see if anyone. Tomato. A turnip. Is a fruit. Oh, turnip. That's a good turnip. one. Turnip is a way better. Oh, turnip. Way I say better. Because uh, tomato is a fruit. People are saying. Well so. done. Tomato is a fruit, Rodney. Ah, it's a fruit. <laughs> Except for tax purposes, says Jackie. But now that's over here. Um, oh. Oh yeah, right. right, right. Oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what are we gonna do with? Just chuck it. All oh, right. We didn't know. Well, it was turnip fine. was a good one. Turnip was a good one. All right. Next one. Boy, they they're sharp today. Let's see here. Something with spots. Jaguar. Boom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, wow. that was an easy one. All right, ready? Easy one. <laughs> Something you have somewhere you have been. It starts with an F. Uh, I've been to a farm. Boring, but I've been to a farm. I guess that works. I feel like fruit market or something like that. Fruit market would work. still hung up on the fruit. Still, I, still like, I can see that. Something annoying. S. Something something annoying. Sand. Gets on your feet. Sticks. I thought annoying. you might say sister. Sister. Oh, I should have. <laughs> that would have been great. But sand. I will sand take my qualifies. Feelings. How dare you? Your sister's lovely. 
You're the one who brought it up. I I did. (laughs) For you, I would never say so. Okay, something that makes you mad that starts with a C. Uh, Something that makes you mad. Cynics. Cynics make me mad. What's a cynic? A cynic is somebody... Someone who's being cynical, I think, is somebody who sort of assumes the worst. They don't have all the information. Oh, okay. I but get they assume mean. the worst. If there's four different ways of seeing the way the situation mm-hmm. is, they're going to pick the worst one. Right. Okay. Basically, yeah. right? Um, not a big fan of cynics. That's not the best definition either, but bear with me here. We're in the it's middle of the game. <laughs> okay. All right. So, something in a courtroom that starts with an I. Uh, hmm. Something in a courtroom that starts with an I. Idol. If you idolize idol? judges and lawyers, <laughs> that, that is, is that an idol. Is, that is, that is kind of weak. <laughs> an idol. If you can come up with something Well, better, you know what? I Honestly, challenge you, okay? like, yeah, when famous people get Are in charged the, yeah, with a crime, idols you could... be in the court. All right, fair enough. I'm giving it to you. Yes. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, a building starts with M. Mansion. Very good. Very good. That's solid. Solid answer. Uh, I'm seeing ink, ink, or investigator for the courtroom. Oh, well, we're past that. No, I know. That's good. Those are good answers. Those are good answers. Yeah, that's really good. Investigator. I like that one. An igloo? (laughs) I don't think you'd see an igloo in there, would you? All right, next one. B is the letter, a place in Australia. Oh, shoot. Uh, I'm so glad I studied out my geography for this. (laughs) um, I don't... I don't know. There's Adelaide, there's Melbourne, uh, but I don't, I can't think of a place in Australia that starts with M. I... I'd like to visit Australia someday, and when I do, I will learn the answer to this question. <laughs> but I don't know it. Beach. Beach? <laughs> yeah, you're just reading, yeah, Jackie. Jackie. You're tried. just reading. Okay. Brisbane. Brisbane. Yes. Good one. That's, that's the right answer. That's a point for somebody else, not us. Ice cream flavor that starts with E? Um. Oh my goodness! What even is a food that starts with okay? Dibs on blue with Brisbane. A lot of Brisbane's. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm embarrassed now. Um, the school system failed us. I have an okay. E ice cream flavor that starts with E. That's a tough one, right? I'm not seeing them come up with any answers either. I think they're delayed a bit. They're, they're delayed. Yeah, it's so. true. <laughs> Eggnog? Eggnog. I've never heard of that. As Elderberry. <laughs> these are these are definitely flavors. I don't know if they're ice cream flavors. <laughs> <laughs> probably. There's probably an eggnog ice cream flavor. Probably. probably. Um, now, I, I will mention, I'm seeing from Octagon 8 asking, how old is Luke? Over and over again. Uh, I haven't answered that question. I generally don't talk about my kids' ages on the show. Luke probably doesn't care about sharing that. I don't, but but hey, it's just the thing I haven't done, so I get it, I'm not ready yeah. to do it now. I yeah. guess I'm 50 years old. <laughs> He's a teenager. How about that? <laughs> Keep it vague. All right, all right. So let's uh, move on to the next thing. The next one is starts with a P, and it's a car part. Petrol. That's the pedal. Oh. Petrol. Pedal. Yeah, the pedal. Car pedal, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're I'm right. not saying it's the most okay. sophisticated okay. car part <laughs> okay. that I could announce, but hey. Speaking of car parts, you want to go get your uh, other Christmas gift? Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Ooh, I'm not holding on. I'm doing the next card while you do that. Uh, what? I'll read it aloud. Something on your wish list that starts with a K. Kangaroo. I want to have a kangaroo one day. <laughs> wants a, look, it's his wish list. I can't deny it. All right. Fine. I also think he's trying to win this game. He'll just say anything. All right. So the next one, <laughs> the next one is S. We have a three-syllable word that starts with S. Syllable. Syllable. Yeah, nailed it. All right, what? that's mine. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> All right, a musical group that starts with C. Musical group. A musical group. Hold on. I, I should totally know this. Yeah, right. you should. That's why I'm hesitating. I'm giving you a chance. There's some really famous band that I should say right now. Oh, I'm that? sure. There's a million. Oh, by the way, look at this. Okay. Oh, here. Uh, how it's, do we how do we bring this in? I might have to go to the. You might have to adjust it to. So no, here's a only. here. Move it the way. There we go. All right. I don't. Let me move it the way. Here we go. So this yeah, is this is a a, a a Christmas gift. Luke doesn't really 
play, quote unquote, with Legos anymore. Yeah. But you were you like puzzles. Yeah. And, and you do like Lego. Yeah. And, and this, this is, is sort of like uh, an extravagant puzzle in a way. And it's uh, it's kind of cool. Let's see if I can move this out of the way and you can show a couple of the uh, kind of cool things about this. Why don't you show it? Okay, show it so off. this was 1,471 pieces. Mm-hmm. And so you got the hood here, and you can pop that up, look at the insides. Yes, yeah, so you can see the, the engine and everything in here. That. Actually, I'll go. drive the engine into the shot. Oh, boy. <laughs> we'll do... Here, I'll move these down a little. So here comes the engine. Here, actually, if I do this shot, it's a little better. Yeah, there you go. Take that off there. You can see, like, there's even, like, elastic bands down there and stuff like that. Yep. So that's just that area. Let me see. Let me get this back on. Okay, bring Go this back. back up. Yeah, back up. Okay. So the car doors themselves. They know, open up. They're like on hinges. Yeah. Pop out, stuff like that. Hey, look, there's pedals in there. Are pedals there? Pedals in there. <laughs> not really. <laughs> there's not pedals. The, the steering the, wheel, though. The steering wheel, you know, actually turns the wheels here. So yeah. technically, you could. Yeah, it's use got it, like yeah. sort of an axle system underneath that functions. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, we didn't want to turn this into yeah. Lego Hour, but that's. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I spent good time on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. All right, so, yeah, there is kind of an obvious one, I think. Coldplay. Well Maybe done. I saw it in the chat. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> there you go. I totally believe it. All right, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. But, yes, Coldplay is a good one. I should right. have gotten that. A tool yeah. that starts with G. A tool. Hmm. A tool. A tool, a tool, a tool. Uh, I think I'm thinking of screw, hammers, I saw. Of, like, screw you know, gun, but... What is what's the one that starts with G? Um, boy, this game's stumping us tonight. I don't know. Too long. It's garage. Been too long. Gar a garage? You put tools in a garage, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Something. Someone handier that. than us is going to know the answer. Something in a desk that starts with an H. Uh, handgun. <laughs> I, you know, I suppose I can't argue with that. It's possible. Not in this house. Um, all right. It is An possible. L. Something fast. It starts with L. Luke. Luke. No, we won't give me that one. Um. <laughs> Something fast. Durr. <laughs> that starts with an L. A leopard. I already leopard. said leopard for spots. No you, no, you said jaguar. I Bons. did. You're right. So Thank you. Leopard, I'm taking that I'll one. Give you that. You'll give it to me? All right. We're almost done. We're almost done, everybody. This is uh, something silver that starts with a P. I a pipe? Yeah, a pipe, definitely. Oh, that's definitely silver. good. That's All right. Like shiny. Next one. An emotion that starts with D. The doldrums. Draw. Oh. Is that an emotion? That's a state. Wait, Down the you dumps. Say? The what doldrums. The doldrums. Have you ever heard that, that no. word before? Yeah, it's not Because I'm not from used. like 1820. <laughs> <laughs> Dare you. Okay. We're going to go with Coastal City. D. Is Detroit a coastal city? That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't I don't think it is. Um... What is a coastal city? Detroit. Mm. I hate anything that has to do with geography because it immediately <laughs> makes me feel incredibly dumb because I have such a bad sense of geography. Don't um, worry, I'm worried. <laughs> you're, you're with yeah. me on that one? I so. feel like I'm like, oh, I think I know this, but if I'm wrong, I feel like this is going to be a dumb mistake. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what if someone gives us something. Oh, Dublin. Dublin? Dublin. Okay. Um, I, I, I'll have to go with your word that it's a, a coastal city. Daylona. Uh, Detroit. Someone said Detroit, so maybe I had that right. I don't know. Uh, something that smells good that starts with I. Igloo? An igloo smells like ice. I don't know that. Are you trying? You, I'm can't, not... you can't spell nice without ice. <laughs> That's how I go about it. So something that smells nice is ice? Um, well, it smells like neutral. How about... Uh, it's probably a flower that starts with an I. You know who would have been nailed, been really good at this? Your mother. Yeah. We were terrible. She would have beat us. Uh, so how many points did you get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven. Ice cream. People incense. Ah, oh, incense. That's good. I thought of ice cream, but it felt a little too close to saying ice cream before. How many you got? Talking about ice cream flavors, I mean, I had seven. How many do you have? Eleven. Eleven. Uh, Luke wins I mean, we did again. we miss... It's <laughs> quite a few. So the way this would normally work is you would have, you would have a judge, mm -hmm. who holds the deck of cards, and holds it out like this, and they would read. You know, they pick again one of the colors in the back to be the color for that that round 
or that game. And they would just read out leisure activity while the rest of the, the people sitting, sitting around can see the, the letter D. And the first person who shouts it out gets it. But you have a judge. So the judge is there to sort out if two people say things at the same time. If something's not right. If something's not right. Something like if you think it, the answer is just a little too weak. In our game, if there was two that were said around the same time, but I thought one was funnier or more clever, I would usually award yeah. it to that person. Yeah, so. And so you go through this entire stack. And I have to say, one of the things I really liked about the game was it was kind of the perfect holiday game. We were between, yeah. I think, we were waiting for supper. We were all yeah. sitting around. A few things were still cooking. It was wasn't enough time to break out a big game. You all sit around the table, learn something. This, we just popped it out of the box. It's good to go. And everyone could just sit around the table where they were. We didn't have to get around a table. Actually, we were just sitting around the living yeah. room, which was kind of fantastic. Yeah. And um, people could come and go as they wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, some people got very invested <laughs> in the battle. But, um, yeah, I, I, think, I thought just for the casual gameplay, excellent. Now, you might be wondering, why is it called trophies? Well, every exactly. single one of these... Um, cards has a trophy on the bottom now i thought these were perhaps historical trophies are they well here's so the one on the front here on the back it tells you the trophy and gives you a little breakdown of what the trophy is this one here is the 2006 jefferson high coolest kid men's division think you're cooler than 2006 winner dj radman think again this kid is the real deal he's the quarterback he's president of the debate team <laughs> And you know all those bands you listen to? Yeah, he liked them before they were cool. <laughs> so, so it is pure facts. <laughs> it's every pure facts. single one of them. Every one of these is one. just a made up other trophy. And they're pretty yeah. funny and humorous. Yeah. <laughs> the Dietary Friendly Burger, Portland, <laughs> 2010. There's just tons of these. So there's that. And uh, the, judge, the judge gets to award a participation trophy. To the person who maybe didn't win, but feels did, did the best job. This is also how you mark when you're done the game. You go through the stack mm -hmm. until you see this. And the actual winner is awarded is this? this tiny little trophy to hoist over their heads in victory. <laughs> so, uh, is really, who won again? Is that me? Was well, that me? unless somebody here. I see, I'm seeing 16 point Jennifer Sims beat us on pretty much every question. Good job, Jennifer. Here, we'll just hand Jennifer what? the trophy. Sorry. My moment of <laughs> glory. Hey, look, Jesse got three points. I'm, thank you, Jesse, for making me feel better. <laughs> All right, Luke, thank you so much for joining me for the, the live show. I'm going to answer some great, questions yeah. here. I got another about 15 minutes to go, I think. All right? All right. So, cheerio. I'm going to mute this again just temporarily while I fish this thing up through my shirt so you don't hear the. The rust. There we go. All right. That was that was trophies. I, I'm going to say, uh, you know, uh, this was not a, an official review, obviously, although it sort of felt that way, didn't it? Uh, I am going to tell you one thing I don't like about the game, though, in the spirit of a review. This is a beef I have with lots of games. I don't understand this. I do not understand this. Someone needs to explain it to me. Why is it that when publishers uh, make these inserts, these awesome little inserts, and there's a well for the cards, why do they not make it deep enough so that it goes higher than the stack of cards? You notice, notice the cards sliding around here on the top like this? Why? Because all you had to do was just make the insert just this much more deep, and it would just sit down inside of the insert. They always make it like just flush to the top. Once you take them out of the shrink wrap, they pop. Look, these are like, you know, first world problems, as you know. But I, I just don't, I don't understand. Because the insert itself, if you look at it, it's got, it's got more room to go. It's got a, at least a full centimeter there, half inch, basically. Um, that it could have been dropped about half, half a centimeter of that. And then these cards would go in there and they'd stay in place. This is uh, the least of the offenders in many ways because it's such a small box, it's not a big deal. But there's a lot of games where it's like a, a proper big board game. And you've got all these wells. Again, they carefully crafted this insert and then made the, the, the depression for the cards like not deep enough. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. But I also don't publish games. So there might be some aspect of complication there that I'm just not appreciating. Is that something you can count it though? Like it's kind of a nuisance, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's get on with, with some of your questions because I'm sure that there's a few in here. Oh, I also want to mention, if you want, there is a super chat button usually down at the bottom you can press. You can donate a little something to the show, which I always appreciate. It supports the show if you want to, and it puts your, your comment in a nice big kind of bubbly balloon thingy. <laughs> so if you want to do that, you can. If you want to support the show in other ways, in the description of the video, we have a Pod Pledge page you can go to, and we have some promos there you can pick up if you'd like, and there's also a link to the, uh, the Kurds 
t-shirt if you'd like to pick that one up as well. But for now, I'm going to go through your questions. So if you asked a question earlier and you're afraid I might miss it, I'm going to scroll back up and try to go through the questions. But uh, feel free to post it again here at the bottom, all right, and I'll try to get to that one as well. Unfortunately, this chat is only letting me go uh, up to where we were talking about turnip, which is a little concerning because there was a lot more questions than that. Oh no. Oh no. Why? 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 Okay, I'm sorry. If you asked a question earlier, please ask it again and uh, make sure you put in all caps the word question before your question. Let me show you what it would look like. It would look something like this. All caps question and then your, your, uh, your question after that in, in not all caps. All right. I do see a couple questions here though. So let's, let's talk about it. Um, so Jonathan Bobo would like to know, what is your favorite heaviest game? Also, if you give a shout out to the Highlands School, I'll show them this video and say that in class. Well, first of all, a big shout out to, what was it? Okay, Highlands School. Shout out to the Highlands School. You don't have to show this to your class if you don't want to, but a shout out to you and, and your class. I hope that you have, um, I don't know what kind of school it is. Let me know. But I hope if you're attending this year that it goes well. Uh, so my favorite heaviest game right now it's a toss-up. I, I would have to say, I, I think I would say Brass Birmingham. Uh, Tricarion, though, I played in 2019, and I really enjoyed it, but I only played it the one time. So I hesitate to say it's my favorite. Brass Birmingham I've played a bunch of times, or, well, a good handful of times, and, uh, and I enjoyed it each time. So I think I would have to go with that one as my current, uh, current favorite. Okay, I'm going to go down to Benjamin Nicholson. Who would like to know, when, what's the next Watch It Played video? So the next uh, tutorial video, I'm going to be shooting it starting tomorrow. It's uh, for Agizia Shifting Sands. This is a, a game that was kickstarted by Stronghold Games. It's now going, I think it's out to backers now. Unfortunately, I got my copy <laughs> when backers did. Sometimes I'll get them in advance so I can have the, the video prep beforehand. Didn't work out that way this time around, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm a little behind the ball there. But it's going to be coming out to retail as well. So I, I believe I will have it in advance of retail. And look, a lot of people got games over the holidays probably, and maybe a Geese isn't one they got to yet, so the video can help with that. The other one that I'm going to be doing right after that is Parano for Paranormal Detectives, a game I played a bunch at BGG Con and really enjoyed. So I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing that with people as well. Uh, <laughs> Aromac would like to know, why does Luke have a Band-Aid on his thumb? Uh, he cut his thumb. There you go. I can answer questions like that all day. We'll get through these real quick. <laughs> so um, let's see. Oh, uh, Karen would like to know, did you have a chance to look at the Kemet 1.5 rules? So if you like Kemet, they actually re-released the rules. They made a few adjustments to them. They didn't re-release the game, although I assume new printings of the game will have the new 1.5 rules in them. I haven't looked at them. I mean, when they first came out, I did skim them. But that's it. I, I didn't look at them in detail. I mean, the next time I would look at them in detail would be when I was playing the game probably. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't played that game in months now. It's been a, been a good little while. But I'm glad to hear that they, you know, they still care about the game enough to want to support it and make sure it's the best it can be. And I'm assuming those ch uh, changes are to make it better. And it was a game I already really enjoyed a lot. So, so that's great. Uh, let's see here. Victor Henriksen, right, wrote... What is your favorite board game from 2019? New to this channel since a few hours. Well, welcome to the channel. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unusual to have someone, I think, I think it's unusual to have someone uh, sort of come through the channel um, so recently uh, and close to a live show. So welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy it and find it uh, helpful as you are exploring maybe games you want to pick up. I would say that the game that was sort of my favorite of 2019, I enjoyed a lot of games, but... Um, so I'm not going to say my favorite. I'll, I'll mention a couple that stood out to me because I really want to sit down and give that more thought. And if you're new to the channel, just know I don't typically review or recommend games here. I prefer just to kind of show how games are played and let you decide for yourself whether or not it's something to be of interest to you because, look, every, every gamer is different. Games that I love, you might hate and vice versa. But uh, a game that really knocked my socks off this year was Watergate. It's a two-player game. Uh, Capstone Games put it out here in North America. I thought it had delicious tension in it, a really fantastic, tight, kind of stressful game. I really, really enjoyed Watergate a lot. So, uh, yeah, and welcome to the channel again. Let's see here. Uh, so, Board Games with Matt asked, why don't we see Pep anymore? Is he gone? I get this question in every live show. Um, so, I've answered it before. I've answered it also uh, in one of our news and updates 
video, so it's probably not one I'll keep answering over and over again, but uh, he's, he's effectively gone from the show. Yes, uh, I let him go at the beginning of last year. Uh, it was a, a scheduling conflict, basically, is what it came down to. I wasn't going to have to work for him with some of the other work I was doing in 2019. So it was, I felt better to let him go and pursue other work rather than sort of be tied down to something that wasn't necessarily going to be able to provide him the work that he would need. Uh, let's see. Sammy would like to know, why can't I see anyone else's comments other than my own? Good question. I don't know. Are you in the live chat? <laughs> there is a live chat during the stream that isn't the same as the comments that you will find underneath of a video typically. So that, that could be why. I'm not sure. So Ed Hickey would like to know, have you ever been asked by a game manufacturer to review their instructions before a game was released? Yes, yeah, I have. Um, and sometimes after the game's released, which I know is not as efficient <laughs> because the game's already published. But um, I, I have done some consultation after the fact on a couple of games where the rules were not, maybe not everything they could be and the publisher realized it after the fact and was, felt that maybe I could lend a helping hand. I'm not actually going to mention which game it was because I think the contract I signed with them was, uh, was private. So. But there's, a, there's another game I'm doing actually right now, Joan of Arc. Uh, which recently came out, well, yeah, it's been out for a while now through Kickstarter, and they're doing another Kickstarter for it. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, testing of their rulebook that they released, which had some issues. So I, I was very keen on this game, and I don't generally offer my services for this because I'm busy enough with all the other things related to the show, but this is a game I just felt a particular passion for, and I, I felt a particular passion for this publisher. I haven't done work with them in the past, but really kind of like their, I don't know, just kind of like them. <laughs> A lot of things happen, I think, in the board game hobby out of that. You know, people liking people and, um, and wanting to work with them. And, and I just got a good sense off of them. And it's a project I wanted to see if I could help make a little better. So I'm going to be, uh, actually something I'm going to be working on the next month or so is going through their rule book, kind of with a fine tooth comb, playing it for the first time kind of with their rules. They have a, they have a new rule set. I'm going to test it and see if I think it surpasses sort of muster for me, for whatever that's worth. Eric Booth, thank you very much for the kind donation in the super chat. If anyone's had done this before, there's a little uh, dollar sign button you can do. Again, you don't have to donate to ask a question at all, but uh, it certainly supports the show and supports these live show, and I always appreciate that. So thank you, Eric, for that. How many... <laughs> Eric's question. Oh, Eric, after all that, now i got to read your question. How many flannel shirts do you own? Do you really want to know? Uh, I mean, you pay $2. I should give you the answer, right? <clears throat> okay, I, I don't know... I don't, I can't bring you with me, but if you give me a second, I'll run up to my closet right now. The microphone is pretty good. It might keep me on audio the whole time. I'm not sure. You paid for this answer, Eric. I'm going to give you this answer. Just one sec. All right, actually, I, I'm with you. So you're with me now, Eric. Let's, let's, hopefully it won't drop out. Okay, so we got to count the one I'm wearing. I've recently done my laundry, so I have, everything should be hanging up in the closet right now. Uh, Christy, I know I'm just, it sounds like I'm talking to myself, but, oh, I think she's in the bedroom. <laughs> she's going to like this. Hi, Christy, can you just pause for a second? I'm uh, on the live show. Someone is, wants to know how many flannel shirts I own, so I'm live streaming my voice at the very least. Okay, flannel shirts. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 31. I think it's 31. Thank you, Christy. Sorry for the interruption. Back to the live stream. Hello, Elvis. Elvis is our cat. Okay. All right. Eric, I don't know if we uh, dropped sound there or not. You'll have to let me know. But I think it's, uh, what did I say, 31? I think I said 31. 31 flannel shirts in Rodney's closet. Okay, 31 shirts. Eric? Wow, okay. Okay, I got a question here from Crystal. Crystal, you said, um, oh, it's, sorry. I, <laughs> Crystal didn't ask a question. I see Crystal's name. I, I like Crystal, I know Crystal. She does wonderful work for uh, the Dice Tower and has a fantastic podcast. And uh, <laughs> I see her and I just want to read her comments when I see them. <clears throat> uh, she's setting off right now to actually, she says to prep for Dice Tower tonight, which starts in six. So she needs to run, have an awesome day. Go check out Dice Tower tonight with, uh, with Crystal. Okay. So Benjamin Nicholson would like to know, when is the next blog? I assume you mean vlog. Uh, so over on the other channel, Rodney 
So youtube.com slash Rodney J. Smith if you want to check it out. I don't know. I, I, um, I didn't mean for there to be as much of a gap as there has been, but the end of the year got very busy and I just didn't feel like it was the right use of my time to try to record vlogs in the, in the bits of downtime that I was having. Better to spend it with the family, you know. So that's, uh, but soon, soon hopefully, so hopefully soon. A few things I want to get kicked off here in the new year as it relates to Watch It Played so I can get back to doing some uh, vlogs as well. All right, so a Dutch Yoda would like to know, um, question, Preda Porter, is the first game from Portal that you haven't done a video for, is it because of the Kickstarter? Um, it was a, for a couple of factors. One of them was because of the Kickstarter. I wasn't sure if this was a game that was going to have a print run outside of the Kickstarter. And so I had some hesitations because I really, I'd rather make videos for games that are going to be for an ongoing audience. You know, people, people today are still, um, you know, watching the Seven Wonders tutorial video I shot back in 2012 because that's a game that's still around. And so that video has value to people still. And I want to make videos for games that are going to have sort of ongoing value to the, the community. Obviously, I can't know <laughs> with every game that I feature, is this going to have the staying power or not? Um, but I, those are sort of the choices I try to make. But I'm very curious about that game. I have it up on my shelf here, and it's one of the unplayed games in my collection. I'm very keen to get to the table. I sat with Ignacy, we talked about it on the BGG live stream at Essenspiel, and I got super excited about the game just from talking to him about it. But he's He's very good at talking about his games. Uh, <laughs> I like Ignacio a lot. All right, so Skywalker Sounds would like to know, question, what board game starts the most heated arguments? You know, I haven't, haven't really had a heated argument in a good while over a board game. I think mostly because uh, with the schedule of the show, uh, for the last, for last year particularly, I haven't been out to gaming nights with, with groups. I've been mostly at home playing with my family and I, we don't argue with each other over board games. So uh, it hasn't really come up, but I, I'm trying to think historically <laughs> what, what games. You know what, the games that made us argue would have been the social deduction games. Oh, I got into some loud conversations over, gosh, I can't think of the name of the game right now. Resistance, resistance. Oh boy, very loud, very loud. <laughs> I got in an argument with Eric Lang about Time's Up <laughs> at BGG Con two years ago. He taught it, and he taught it in a, in a uh, he, not, it wasn't Time's Up we were playing. We were playing Lang's Up, something very different. He had a totally different set of rules, and it was perfectly fine and fun, but it was not, it was not Time's Up, whatever it was. And that was, uh, yeah, I, I am probably a little bit of a rules lawyer. I like rules to games. I like to play games the way they're, you know meant to be played, and we were not playing that game the way it was meant to be played. Whew! Um, all right. So, uh, Jesse would like to know, what's the next talk, what's the next talkback video? So, uh, the, the most recent table talkback video just dropped to cap off the uh, discussion about games that are overpowered or game balance and that sort of thing. If you didn't catch it, it just went up on the Board Game Geek YouTube channel. Keep in mind, even though it looks like my usual settings sometimes, those videos are posted on the Board Game Geek YouTube channel. So if you'd like to check those out, uh, subscribe over there. I'm hoping to have one released in January. I don't know exactly what the topic's gonna be. I'm circling a couple of ideas. And uh, once I know, you'll know. And I know we're getting close to time. Well, we're a little bit past time, but we'll go a little bit longer because of those audio issues we had earlier. So Easy Target 83 would like to know any expos or cons planned this year. Yeah, uh, quite a few. Uh, let's see, we've got I've got a, a BGG meeting uh, retreat in January. In February, I'm going to France for Con, uh, Cannes. Uh, that'll be my first time doing that trip. So we'll, I'll be live streaming with BGG there. Uh, what else? There's, um, there's Origins. Most, well, I'm not sure if, if I'm gonna be able to make it to Origins or not this year. There is, I want to, I love that convention, but the, there might be a conflict uh, with some stuff going on here at home. Gamma. Uh, which is in Reno, there's BGG Spring, BGG Con, there's a BGG Cruise, there is a, a, the Tokyo Game Market in, in Tokyo, which I've never been to, I'll be going to that this year, I believe, and uh, Spiel, and did I mention Gen Con? Yeah, I think those are, the, those, are the, those are all of them, I think. I might be missing one in there, but um, yeah, that, that should be, those should be the ones I'll be at, so if you're at any of those, maybe I'll, I'll see you there. 
Uh, Meg would like to know, are you going to continue your vlog channel? Yes, I, I am. I think you may have, maybe some of the answers from the other ones are catching up to some of these, these newer questions. So you probably heard my answer already on that. So Rory would like to know, can you do a video um, of Star Wars Outer Limits using solo play? You know, I don't pre-announce what games I'm going to feature. I mean, I did in this episode. I talked about Agizia and Paranormal Detective, but that's because I've already got them all scripted. So those ones are for sure happening. I generally don't uh, announce because things change. My schedule can change and I don't like to disappoint people or have them expecting. So anytime I'm asked, you know, are you doing game X or game Y, I always just say, sorry, I can't say. It's just, it's, it's been a, it's I think a healthier uh, policy to adopt um, rather than potentially disappoint people when I can't follow through on, on certain things that maybe I plan to. <laughs> so Fran would like to know, when you have a doubt with rules, who helps you? Well, I, look, if I have a doubt about a, a game that I'm doing a tutorial video for, I go directly to the publisher. I work with the publishers directly on the tutorial videos that I make because I want you to feel very confident that when you watch the video, you are getting the absolute truth of the game, which sometimes means that the, the games, the videos, will contradict the rule book because sometimes I'll find problems in the rule book, I'll get the official answer, and that will end up in the, in the video. So I, I do sometimes get questions from people on the videos going like, where's that rule? I don't see that rule anywhere in the rule book. And I'll be like, well, it's not in the rule book, but it's true. Um, so I'll go to the publisher. If I don't have a direct connection to the publisher, maybe it's just for a different game, not one I'm working on, then I'll go to Board Game Geek. Like a lot of people, I go there and I search for the answers in the forums, hope that the publisher's in there. Sometimes you can find the publishers on social media and then generally they're pretty, uh, helpful and generous with their time. If you can ask a question and politely and do so, they'll usually give you an answer. All right. So Samuel would like to know, have you played Irish Gage? It's my new obsession. I have, in fact, I have a tutorial video for it. So you won't need my tutorial video because it sounds like it's one that you've uh, already played a bunch. But uh, yes, that's a, that's a game that uh, I quite enjoyed. Jennifer Sims, thank you so much for the super chat donation to the channel. Um, if, again, if you'd like to super chat donate, you get a little dollar sign thing you can click on with your question. You know, I, um, I should come up with some little animated graphic or something when people do a super chat uh, to, to include in here. What would you name a new board game cafe? Oh, Jennifer Sims, challenging question. What would I name? Um, hmm. It'd be difficult for me not to put some kind of Canadian slant to it. Um, I, and I would want to say probably use a moose, but I wouldn't go ma the meeple, the moose meeple, because I wouldn't want to use meeple. Uh, it's too inside baseball, I think, for the hobby. What would I, what would I do? <sighs> games, eh? <laughs> Maybe that'd be a games, comma, E-H, question mark? Maybe? I don't know. I wouldn't want to run a board game cafe, though, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm, gl I'm so grateful to the people who do, though, because I think it's w uh, just a wonderful gateway into the hobby because I think board game stores, some, can be a little intimidating if you're outside the hobby. You go in, it's just shelves and shelves of things you've never seen before. Um, and you can probably feel a little bit out of your element. You're like, where's Monopoly? Where's Clue? Where's Risk? I don't recognize any of these games. But a cafe is a cafe. People know how to go in and order a coffee or order a bite to eat. So you can kind of go in under the guise of like just getting something to eat, kind of scope out the place. And, uh, you know, oftentimes at these cafes, they have someone there who will actually teach you the games or recommend one to you. It's really, um, yeah, I think cafes are great. I wouldn't want to own one personally, a lot of responsibility, but I'm so grateful that they, they uh, exist. All right. Maggie would like to know, do you like Munchkin? Uh, I don't mind on the channel, I'm trying to loosen up a little bit, giving opinions on games, but if I don't particularly like a thing, I don't know that I really want to go into it too much because it might be your thing, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, Munchkin's not really my thing. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Nathan would like to know, better word, cards or resources? So, some people might know that I, uh, it's been noted that I have a little bit of an, a Canadian accent, East Coast Canadian accent, and when I say cards, sometimes my American counterparts will spell it in the comments as K-E-R-D-S. That's what they're hearing me say. Another one, uh, that I can hear. I could never hear the way I say cards as being different than anyone else that I hear, but resources, resources, is something I used to say on the channel quite frequently. Resources, like a Z in there instead of an S. I have made some efforts to adjust that. I try to say resources now. So it's more of an S sound than a, 
a, a Z or a Z sound. <laughs> so I, I think my favorite, though, of the two words is definitely cards and, and the reaction that it's had from a, <laughs> a number of people. All right, let's see what we got here. We got, oh, it's just the questions are just, they're just coming fast and furious now. I need to pick up the pace. So I'm going to try to pick up the pace. You're going to try to answer a little quicker because I'd like to get through as many of your questions as I can. And then we'll try to wrap this up in like, let's say seven minutes. I think that's what I said before, but let's try for seven. It's hard. I enjoy spending time with you. Once we get started, I want to keep, uh, keep going. So Michael Fox would like to know, what is your favorite category of board games? Do you appreciate themes or mechanics more? Also, could you please give a shout out to my friend, Ian, for his 40th birthday this Sunday. Ian, happy birthday. 40 is a big one. Don't let anyone tell you that 40 is old. I'm 40, I don't know how old I am, 40, 44. And I feel like I'm in the prime of my life. Um, you know, Chris was saying, are we old? I said, by some measure, sure. But um, I don't know, I'm still, still feeling it. So happy 40th birthday, Ian. So what is my favorite category of board games? Um, I, I would have said area control because I've really enjoyed area control for the longest time. You're, I, I still enjoy area, area control games, but I probably don't lean towards them as much as I used to. I feel like saying Euro games is a weird, it's too broad. I'm going to tell you a few things that I like. Uh, I like games with multi-use cards. So maybe the card can be used as a resource, but it can also be used for its ability or it can be used for something else, whatever. I like that. I really like, like, well, Water, Watergate would be another example of that. You know, you're playing a card that has two possible uses. One is like this one-time powerful use. You use it, it's gone from the game. The other is kind of an ongoing use, which can also be powerful situationally. And that sort of tension of like knowing your resources are very limited, this, this deck of cards, and you're always on a razor's edge of losing, and every card matters. I, I really like that. I don't like a lot of luck in my games. I don't mind luck in games, especially if the, the, the game is something shorter. But I do, I get a certain satisfaction out of the luck coming from things like a deck of cards that you don't know exactly what's going to come next, but you kind of know what's in there, as opposed to rolling a die where you might roll a bunch of ones over and over and over again and just, you know, have a really bad game. But again, it's, it's, very, it's very situational. I played games where there's tons of dice and really enjoyed them, so it, it kind of depends. That's why I think game recommendations are kind of hard to give, frankly, because eventually you will always contradict yourself. Something you like, you say you like, you won't like in another game, <laughs> and vice versa. So, I'm not going to get to these questions if I answer them taking this long. Sorry. But, uh, good question. <laughs> James Nichols would like to know, are you avoiding doing a tutorial for Star Wars Rebellion because you know that box flip at the start of the video would be a nightmare? <laughs> I could flip that box. I got it here. I'd flip it. But it's, you know, it's buried in... We've... we've Got a lot to do here. We got questions to get to. I get up and flip it right now. Whew. Dodge that one. Are there any upcoming new games releases in 2020 that you are excited about? Yes, um, there are. The ones I'm thinking of right now, and I do not mean to be this guy, are ones I can't talk about right now. They're just things that haven't been announced yet, and I have to wait for the publisher to announce them. But the, the honest truth, though, really, is that I. There are things I'm looking forward to, yes, but I'm not looking so far ahead these days. I, I often just look at my shelf and go, oh, I'm looking forward to playing that game again. I'll look forward to playing that game again. I'm still a cult, the new player. I love playing new things all the time, um, but I'm not hungry for it the way I, I would say I used to be, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. I, I'm now at the point in the comments where I finished counting all the, the flannel shirts in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, I did count the one I was wearing at the time. All right. So, Jonathan Bobel, thank you very much for the super chat donation <laughs> and for the kind comment. I'm glad you enjoyed my run up there to uh, count the shirts. Zero Bad Ideas would like to know, I'm having a baby in March. How early do you think I could get them into simple board gaming? Well, with hobby games being out there now, early. Uh, my niece, who I don't know her age, she's not in school yet. I know that, maybe three or four. Uh, I bought her a, a, a hobby game, which is just it's very simple. You, 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 I think you roll a die, you flip a thing, and, and you move the, the same colored token or whatever. Nothing to it in terms of gameplay. But there is, at that level, there's something going on. And uh, hobby makes these really wonderfully produced games, very bright, very appealing to kids. Those are the games you should put in front of a child. 
Uh, I know a lot of enthusiastic gamer parents want to get their kids playing Tricarion as soon as possible. I don't recommend it. Uh, start with something you think they'd enjoy and then slowly kind of build them up to the things that maybe you'd enjoy. That, that would be sort of my general advice there. Oh, I just remembered, I have a question that I want to answer from Jackie that was, came in from the uh, BGG Guild. So if you're joining us late, um, just know there's a Watch It Play Board Game Geek Guild. Just search Watch It Play Guild, you'll find it. And uh, when I do live shows, I give an opportunity there to let people know in advance so they can ask questions that they want. And this is one from Jackie. She says, what is the best way to handle someone who is giving rough treatment to a game at the table? I'm sure some of us have encountered this before, right? You've got your favorite game out of all time and someone's at the table and they're just kind of like flicking it or maybe they're <laughs> chewing on that meeple or just doing, maybe they got the greasy fingers and they're going to grab, uh, you know, your cards. Whatever it is. It can be a little unsettling, right? My advice, I, well, here's the thing, uh, and I, I think Jackie would probably agree. If you're talking about a friend, it's much easier because you can just say to them, hey, look, sorry to be precious about this, but like, would you mind just wiping your hands off before you pick up those cards? This is a game that's special to me. The challenging situation, I think, uh, and probably where this question's really going, is when you're dealing with strangers and you're at a game group, maybe there's a new gamer there at the table, and you know they just don't necessarily understand or appreciate the value of the game. It's, it's very different than, I don't know, collecting vases, <laughs> where most people would know not to pick them up and throw them around in the air. Like, board games are made up of things that, on the surface, seem cheap. Flimsy cards, some wood, you know what I mean? So most people who are treating them, quote unquote, poorly, probably don't even appreciate what they're doing. And, you know, most people, most of us don't want to embarrass somebody. But the embarrassment can go both ways, can't it? Because you can be embarrassed for them and not wanting to put them or make them feel self-conscious. But you might not also want to make yourself feel self-conscious. Like, again, acting precious about this little bit of cardboard and plastic. Like, someone, what's the big deal? You can see someone kind of coming back and go, what's the big deal? It's just a card. What's your hang-up? Or like, okay, fella, all right. Or lady or whatever. Like, I guess if, I'll be more careful with your precious game. Like, you don't really want to create that situation in the middle of, of a game. But... As, 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 understand, as understandable as those feelings are, I think the only real solution is, well, there's, you know what, there's, there's two things. I just, one of them I just thought of now. If you think it's going to be a concern, probably the easiest way to address it is before the game starts. Before anyone's actually guilty of making a mistake, just let them know, hey, this is a game that's very special to me. It's actually quite expensive. And in particular, if these cards get damaged or marked in some way, it actually will be hard to play with because then we'll be able to tell what card someone's holding or whatever, however you have to explain it. But maybe saying it up front takes some of the pressure off during the, the gameplay. Then if someone is doing something, you know, they can just be maybe a, a, a kind look or, a, oh, hey, just remember what I said about the card, you know, just a callback to that thing and it will be a little less, a little less drawing it, focus on somebody. But let's just say you haven't done that and it's in the middle of the game and someone's doing it, you know, and they're being like really vigorous with the game. I think the only thing you can do is to be kind but direct and just, again, just emphasize to them, Hey, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything, but I'm noticing you're bending the card there. And if that card gets bent, the game sort of becomes unplayable. That's a card everyone will know which one you're holding because it's got the bend in it. And believe it or not, this was actually a quite an expensive game. Look, they might roll their eyes at you, they might do whatever. My feeling is better to find out what kind of player they are quickly. <laughs> and if, that, if they're that kind of person who doesn't respect or appreciate your things, Maybe it's better to find that out sooner so you can avoid playing with them or uh, you know, have somebody at your game group, if there's someone in leadership there, talk to them or whatever. Um, maybe that's sometimes the best. I think avoiding it and suffering in silence isn't really the answer, even though, again, to address it might be uncomfortable. I don't know if that's helpful or not, uh, Jackie, but those are just a couple of, of thoughts I had. A good, good question. All right. What did I say? I was like, oh, boy. Okay. We're, we're running late. I'm going to... Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go very fast now, very fast, speed round, as Pep and I used to call it. <laughs> best, uh, Henrik would like to know, best way to interpret, deal with ambiguous rules, because most of the time I'm a perfectionist and prefer to always play correctly. Me too, but here's the thing, at the end of the day, if you're playing a game with friends, nothing makes it worse than beleaguered arguing about what the rules are. If you're convinced you're right, but you don't feel like the, team, the table is, is with you, go with the table. Figure it out later on your own time, write a letter, Nicely worded letter to the designer, get the answer, come back and solve it later. Don't ruin your game night over it. My best way is I'll go to BGG. If I can't find out the rules, I'll go to BGG or I'll talk to a friend maybe who's played it. 
to play a lot, maybe they have an answer. So that's, that's the quick, quick one on that one. Wes, uh, Wes uh, Gromus, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the kind Super Chat donation <laughs> and for the comments saying, Happy New Year, Rodney. This donation for flannel shirt number 32. <laughs> thank you, Wes. That's wonderful. Um, any Canadians cons this year from Awfully Fun Games? I would love to. I don't have any currently on the list. There's one in Toronto that's been trying to get me out, and it's always conflicted with the busiest, one of the busiest periods of time for me to travel, which is in March. So no plans currently, but hopefully, maybe, maybe, I don't know. If, it, if there's no plans to, it might come up later. So, so would like to know, do I watch any anime shows or read manga? I don't watch any shows. I have read um, Lone Wolf and Cub. I don't think that's anime. Is that manga? That's manga, right? Uh, great series, by the way. Uh, board games with Matt would like to know have I played Tainted Grail? I have not played it. Am I interested? Yes, I am. But that's like one of those games where I was saying earlier, like there's all these games out there. I'm not really, I'm sort of looking at the games in my own collection that I haven't played yet. Those are the ones I'm most keen to play and everything's sort of out there. I'll get to it when I kind of get past that little barrier of stuff I already have that I want to get played. Will we ever see the return of Luke the Lucky in Arcadia Quest or Arcadia Quest Inferno? says Earth Gremlin. Do you mean like on the show playing? We Probably not because we wouldn't, we don't typically replay games we've played before. But I do hope to get back to some gameplays in 2020. Okay. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go faster because I'm terrible. I just, I wanna take the time and answer each one of these questions thoughtfully and carefully. Uh, okay. <laughs> the Dragon's Tomb writes, Jeff writes from Dragon's Tomb, look at Rodney trying to pretend he's a working keyboard and mouse. Who do you think you're fooling? They don't even have chords. All right, you're on to me, okay? All right, fine, I know, they're not real. Jeff, can I just have this one thing? Do you have to shatter every illusion? Dragon's Tomb, it's a great YouTube channel. You can check it out if you've got nothing better to do, I guess. He makes tutorial videos, they're fine. Okay, not my eyeball games. Like, no, what expansion for Five Tribes would you think is the best one to buy first for? I don't know. I own them. <laughs> I think I own the first and second one, maybe. But I, the, I don't know if it's just a fake mouse, but I still need to use it. It makes me feel like, it, like I'm doing something. Uh, I haven't played them, so I can't, I can't recommend on that one to you. Sorry. Cameron Wadrop would like to know, John Henry was a steel-driving man. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. He, he was a steel-driving man, indeed. Benjamin Nicholson commented, Rodney is terrible at answering questions fast. Yes, this is true. Uh, it's true. Echo Echo said, Villainous ruined a game night once for us over a rules disagreement. Rules disagreements are tough, especially if they happen and it feels like... This wasn't even a question I'm answering it. Oh, dear Lord, help me. I'm not good at this speed round thing. So the thing that's a pain is when it happens, when the rules question comes up and it's clear if it goes one way, boy, it's really going to help somebody. And if it goes the other way, it's really going to help this other person. Because then people get kind of invested in the outcome and it can start to be like, are you being unbiased with, with your reading of this rule or is it that you want it to go your way? That's tough. Um, you know, there, Games Workshop has a rule in, in its rule book, rule books, and, and many have. If you get to a point where there's an impasse, do a roll off, roll a die, you know, split it 50-50. One to three means you're right. Four to six means I'm right. And yeah, it's still going to suck for one of the people. They're going to feel cheated. But don't fight. It's game night. Try not to fight about it if you can. Try to move past it. Somebody, I always encourage like somebody just to be the bigger person if they can, just for the sake of the rest of the group, because it sucks to be there when people are, you know, fighting over something that is supposed to be fun, right? But it's tough because we get invested. And that's a good thing too. It's, it's good to get invested in the game and, and to want to win. Um, not the sake of everything. But I wouldn't enjoy playing a game if I felt like the other person was just making decisions willy-nilly and didn't care at all and didn't have some investment in the outcome of the game. So it's a tough balance, this thing. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about board games, frankly, is that it forces you to be in the muck and the mire of human interaction and to navigate those sometimes awkward or difficult situations. And we don't always do it well, but we need practice in that area. And I think that that's something video games don't give us. Video games give us anonymity in a multiplayer game. And they cause us to be sometimes people we wouldn't be in real life. And board games give us, again, that ability to wrestle with some of those difficult situations face to face, which I think is a great skill. All right, Christopher Martinez is tired of these fake YouTubers. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Uh, Christopher Martinez would like to know when I'm gonna get another fade. It looked clean last time, thank you, thank you. It was uh, a little uh, something different. Maybe I'll do it again, I don't know, I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm seeing some nice comments here from uh, Ephraim. Thank you very much. Thanks for the kind words. Appreciate that. Um, all right. So I think I think I got to end here because I'll never end. I, people keep asking. You know, if you stop asking questions, I like, get <laughs> to the end of them. But that's the point of this: is to ask questions. So, oh, John Minor, that's a great question. Maybe that's a question to ask the next time I'm doing a live show. Maybe put that in the BGG Guild. Uh, any questions that didn't get asked? If you see the B, if you want to subscribe to the Watch It Played guild on board game geek the next time i'm doing a live show i'll put a thread in there i don't post a lot of threads in there so you won't get bombarded with stuff but it might be a way to get some of your questions in there all right i am going to <laughs> jackie i just saw your question how can i get my long distance gaming friends to play online more often anyone in particular jackie anyone in particular you're referring to we'll get that game of terraform mars started real soon maybe tonight maybe tonight maybe tonight. we'll see we'll see all right, Jackie and everyone, thank you. Thanks again for joining me for another live show. I hope we can kick off a good tradition of doing these every two weeks. I said every two weeks for these, except for this next two weeks because I'm traveling. So the next live show, if all goes well, should be January 22nd. Uh, it should go up on the YouTube channel a couple of days in advance. There should be a little announcement thumbnail to let you know it's coming, and I'll also post it on the Board Game Geek Guild. But everyone, thanks again for joining me. This is the fun part of the live stream where I have to shut it down, and usually there's a problem. You should know YouTube has updated its live streaming software, so I've got a totally different system I'm working with here now, which is fun, and that means this ending will not work, probably. But let's try. Everyone, until the next episode, thanks for watching. So it's, it's new and updated, but they still have the thing where you have to say uh, goodbye twice because they prompt you to make sure you really want to end your stream. So let's try it one more time, and I'll be prepared for this next time so it'll happen more like this. Until next time, everyone, thanks for watching.